Hi everyone! Uh, today I want to show you this little thing. Uh, it's one of my first 1 to 10 scale supercars and it's designed to be a representation of a 1 to 10 scale Acura slash Honda NSX. So the whole design process was very similar to the ones in Spano GTA where I basically imported the scaled down version of the 3D model into LEGO Digital Designer and I use that as a reference to do all the paneling and the paneling is done quite detailed you can see that there are lots of different angles used and the end result is very close to the original let's say like that so this is a motorized supercar and what kind of functions do we have? let's start with the steering once you steer the wheels, the steering wheel also follows them. Uh, inside uh, here you will see that the doors have door stoppers, so you cannot force the doors more open than this. And the doors are also designed so that the panels uh, slightly uh, overlap here, so that they won't open during driving. Talk about interior, you also have two full-sized seats. They are almost the same scale as 1 to 8 uh, scale seats usually. They are 6 studs wide, so the virtual drivers and the passenger have plenty of space to stretch their legs. So I'm really happy with how much space there is actually left for the interior. Now, since this is a motorized car, it has to have some kind of a wheel drive. And it does. Here it is, and if we spin one of the wheels, you can see that also this wheel spins, which means this 1 to 10 scale model has all wheel drive, differential in front, differential in back, or the opposite, and there's also something else. We also have a two speed gearbox, and the gearbox is designed so that we are using two uh, sh uh, shifters and two rings uh, which are both powering this central axle. The central axle goes directly to the rear wheel drive while the front is powered via CV joints because the front axle is uh, one stud higher than the rear. So why am I using two uh, rings and two gears for the gearbox? Well, uh, because there is a power of four motors we have to somehow spread the power evenly between the parts. So this is why I'm using two high gears and two low gears. Currently the model is in high gear. The advantage of using this setup is that the gears are both driving one central axle. And if you imagine this is the central gear, this side is pushing it down, while this side, which is also spinning in the same direction, is pushing it up which means that the central axle has no side forces to deal with so there are no side forces pushing the axle into the bearing or pushing it the other direction which means the central axle there is no problem with the axle uh, melting or things like that so the central axle only has to deal with torque this gives this kind of setup a really good efficiency and very good, uh, let's say, uh, lifetime because there are no side forces on the main drive axle. Now this is uh, uh, what it comes when it comes to the drive, but this is still not everything this model has. To top it up, uh, we also of course have suspension, which I almost forgot to mention. Uh, the front wheels can steer at about 25 degrees, so I'm using all the available space of the wheels so they they are steering as much as they can uh, without actually touching uh, without actually touching the bodywork. And lastly, we also have a V6 fake engine, and this V6 fake engine is coupled directly to the uh, fast output of the motors. Because the gearbox uh, is coupled to the slow output, uh, it means that the quick output was left uh, free, 
and the quick output is driving, driving the V6 engine directly. So even if you have the gearbox in the neutral, you can still drive the V6 engine and let's say rev it in neutral. And this also gives another uh, uh, step, uh, this is another step in realism, basically the motor, the fake engine is connected to the driving motors before the gearbox, not after them. And I'm really happy with how that turned out. Now I'm gonna show you some uh, performance videos and then we'll come back and we're gonna look at the 3D model uh, in more details. I would like to thank Sariel for uh, some of the footage that is shown in the video. <laughs>
Okay, uh, so let's look at the 3D model. So basically, first thing you'll see, uh, I'm using the reference which I found somewhere online of the real uh, car, basically. I scaled it down 10 times in Blender and imported it into LEGO Digital Designer. And I'm using this to shape the bodywork. So, let's see how well the bodywork turned out. Well, I think it follows the original reference quite well. There aren't too many places where it sticks out too much, maybe a bit here or a bit at the doors, but we're talking like half a stud here. So I think it follows very close uh, and uh, I can tell you that it's for sure more accurate than the Legos uh, 42083 Chiron, for example. So let's hide the reference and this is how the model looks in digital version. Basically, it's the same as the physical. And one thing we can do here is we can hide the bodywork and see how exactly the model is built. This is how it looks without the bodywork. Uh, everything is very compact. Uh, it is full with uh, motors, mechanisms, things. And we can go slowly over the model. Uh, first, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide the interior and first thing, let's see how the steering works. So basically the steering system is connected to this gear here and this gear is connected to the same steering uh, rack as the mod that is the model uses for steering. Basically the same rack that is powered by the powered up L motor is also used to power the steering wheel and this is how it basically works. On the other uh, side we also have another rack, uh, so this way the steering system is very robust and has as low slack as possible. We can also hide the cover here and under here we have a powered up L motor. This one is driving the rear gearbox via a worm gear and the worm gear uh, prevents the gearbox from falling out of gear basically. The drive motors are uh, shaped in such a way that they are at an angle and the angle is required in order to fit everything inside uh, this small uh, packaging. Because they are at an angle this leaves uh, enough space between them for this uh, motor for switching gears and also enough space for the uh, V6 uh, fake engine. The Bubis mo uh, controllers are placed here at the side and they are easily reachable for charging. Now let's hide the electronics and this is what we have here. If we look at the fake engine, it is driven by these two clutch gears and the clutch gears are driven by a cardan and CV joints and they are driven by the uh, motor's fast output. So the fast output is driving the V6 engine directly and the slow output is driving the two gearboxes. Now we can concentrate on the front and the rear axle, so I'm gonna hide the central uh, chassis. And if you concentrate, for example, on the front axle, we see that the drive comes here with this, uh, via this CV joint because the front differential is placed a stud higher than the rear and the drive uh, uses the home built let's say CV joints here which are driving the hub and the reason why the front axle has two shock absorbers is because there was no uh, room to just use one because these five studded lever arms are uh, required to hold the suspension together so the only way to provide sufficient force with such a low uh, lever that is here was to double up on the shock absorbers. So I'm using two shock absorbers for each front wheel. And this provides uh, just enough uh, force to support the weight. Another thing I would like to mention uh, in the front here, and I use the same in the back, is that I use this piece, which pushes the differential into the 22 uh, bevel gear and this keeps the differential from skipping. If we check in the rear axle I use the same technique here and the same piece is used here to keep this differential from skipping. 
the rear uh, drive axle is designed in a similar fashion as the front one. Uh, the only difference is that the differential is placed one step lower in order to accommodate the V6 engine above it. And this is also why the front uh, axle is driven via CV joints, while the rear axle is driven directly from the gearbox. Again, as with the front axle, I'm using my self-built uh, CV joints for the inner side, while the outer side uses the strong Lego CV joints. The front axle, uh, as mentioned before, uses two shock absorbers per wheel, but in the rear only uses one because it can be placed to support the weight much better, much further outside. So, as you see, this model is one of uh, my, let's say, best performing models so far. Not only does it go 20 km an hour, not only does it have enough torque to spin all of the wheels, not only does it do J-turns and jumps over ramps, it can also drive off-road up a hill, even though it was never designed to do that, and I am really, really happy how well it performs. And not only does it perform well, it also looks good. So the bodywork is very organic, there are almost no straight lines, even the doors are uh, set at an angle. So I think it really looks great. And another thing to mention here is that the bodywork, not only does it look good, and not only is it very robust, there were some crashes and you saw that nothing broke, it also adds to the structural rigidity. So you can try bending the car, there is nothing to bend. You can even grab it by the roof, swoosh it around like a rocket ship. You see, nothing, nothing breaks. It is very robust and I am really happy how it turned out. And yes, but is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. But there is one, mm, let's say, weakness. If and if and if, if you push the model really hard, then you can end up breaking the 12 tooth gears in the differentials or the, the three studded axle slowly but surely slides out and once the axle slides out because it's rounded at the end it kind of chews inside of the 12 tooth gear and it destroys the opening so it's no longer perfectly cross shaped it's kind of rounded and once it happens you have to replace the 12 tooth gear sometimes even the axle But can we fix this issue? Yes, it would require two new parts from LEGO though. First, uh, we would uh, need a wheel hub that accepts the big, stronger CV joint directly. This would uh, free up space by one stop and allow us to use the normal CV joints for the inside here instead, instead of these uh, brick built ones. Secondly, uh, I would use the Ferrari Zero Differential now remember, this model was designed in 2021, where I didn't have the colors or the new parts available. This is why it's also red. So back in 2021, this is all I had. But now I would use the Ferrari differential. And this uh, would uh, fix the issue of uh, the skipping. So I would no longer need this uh, white parts here. And this would uh, fix basically the rear axle. So new, new hill hubs and then a new differential from the Ferrari. And lastly, because the differential from the Ferrari has a higher gearing, it means that the, in the high gear we need a higher speed. So I would also need a 24 tooth clutch gear here to drive an 8 tooth gear. Now currently, the only way to use a 24 tooth clutch gear is to use the old 4 stud long differential, but there is no way I can squeeze that in here. So, Lego. If you're watching, please, we need a wheel hub that accepts the new CV joint without gearing, so similar to the planetary one, but with one-to-one -one gearing, and we need a 24 tooth clutch gear. Uh, having said that, uh, this problem only arises when you're pushing the model hard. Other than that, it is very reliable, it works great, it looks great, I'm 
really happy with how it turned out and if you're also like it then please remember to like and subscribe and I will have more videos coming in the near future. Thank you very much and have a good day. Bye!